Hello everyone, this is Suspension Vika and this is SolidWorks Suspension Series Part 1. Now we will be designing DNM RCP 2 a shock absorber on SolidWorks. I know this video is coming a bit late as I have already announced about this video on my Instagram handle. Uh, but no issues, for those who haven't checked out my Instagram handle, the link will be in the description and, and there I post about all my latest videos and blogs about race car engineering and vehicle dynamics. So go check it out and follow. So we'll be making the upper part of the basically the upper body of the shock absorber DNM RCP 2 is so starting with sketching on the front plane we'll make a center line and then we'll make a circle and line so here we are making the uh, the upper portion of the upper body uh, in this portion the bolt will be placed so that the damper can be mounted at any position uh, so for making this uh, as you as you saw that i am bringing up the commands like line and circle directly from the thin air it is not some sort of magic but it is some of the key tricks that we are use we are going to use throughout the making of the damper in solidworks so for using this uh, tricks uh, we'll just uh, sel uh, select the basically right click the uh, mouse and uh, drag the mouse simultaneously by, by uh, doing this uh, we will get uh, four options like uh, measurements line circle and rectangle so we can choose uh, between uh, four four of this and uh, we can easily make uh, the sketch on the on the plane so for making the upper portion, we'll make the inner circle through which the bolt will be passed and we'll trim out the section and uh, we'll give the outer dimension, uh, outer diameter as a uh, radius as uh, 12 mm and uh, the height as 15 mm, the inner radius as uh, 6 mm, basically the diameter as 12 mm. So we'll be making a center line here to give the height of the damper that is uh, between the I to I length basically. So here you can see that in the bottom right corner I have chosen MMGS uh, metric system. So you have to make sure that you are using this metric system to follow the this, uh, this video's uh, procedure. So here I am making a 190 by 51 mm DNM RCP to a shock absorber as you, can, as you saw in the previous video uh, from, the, uh, from the, that uh, damper I have uh, chosen the dimensions uh, and based on that I am making this uh, SOLIDWORKS model. Now we'll, make, uh, we'll extrude it through mid plane and give basically an extrude of 14 mm. And now you can see the, the extrusion is correctly 14 mm. Now we'll sketch on the on the selected plane as you can see in this plane. Uh, you can uh, right click and select sketch plane and, and I'll be making a circle. We'll give this dimension as thirty-eight point three mm. 
now we'll extrude it to 16 mm towards the bottom portion now yeah it looks good now we'll be selecting this plane and start sketching on it and we'll make a circle of uh, 32 mm and we'll extrude this by 70 mm towards the bottom portion Seventy mm, as you can see. Now uh, this is how the rough upper portion of the shock absorber will look like. Now we'll be selecting the front plane. And we'll make a Okay, uh, front plane here. We'll make a sketch and basically a center line. So, here we are making the bottom portion of the upper body. So, after this, you can see how the bottom portion will look like. Start by making a rough sketch uh, without dimensions. Now, as you can see that uh, what I did here was uh, uh, select a line. Then I after then if I bring the uh, line uh, the arrow back to the previous point, uh, we can I can make an arc. Now we'll give the dimensions. I will give this as eight mm. This is 14. This is 2. This is 1. And this is 1.5. And give a radius of 2.5. Now we can give this as 4 mm. Now we'll connect the remaining portion this to this and it's done. Now uh, we'll just uh, select a revolve boss. Oh, I selected the wrong one. Revolve boss space, and here you can see the 60 degrees. And this is how the little bottom portion of the upper body will look like. This is an isometric view. So, okay, this is. Yeah. Now what we'll do is uh, we'll select this portion and just uh, right click and sketch on that and uh, now we'll select the inner circle and do convert entities. So we'll give uh, we'll get a circle on the plane, sketch plane, and we'll exit. Now uh, I don't think that I have to do a swept cut. Wait a minute. Um,
okay what we are going to do is select curves and just uh, make sure that uh, we have selected height and revolution here and then we, we have to give the dimensions like 45 mm height 40 mm uh, 40 revolutions 15 degree start angle and clockwise so after selecting this options we can see we can click height and here we'll get uh, some threads not threads basically some uh, lines like threads so uh, I, before that i have to make a, a hole through which the shaft will be passing in the upper body i uh, totally forgot about that so we'll make here so we'll select the this portion and uh, uh, we can right click and start sketching on it and uh, for that and after that we'll make a circle of 12 mm, mm dia and just uh, extrude, extrude cut that to 70 mm yeah extrude cut 70 mm and Just extrude cut the select the circle and next time. Now we'll continue by making threads uh, for making the threads. So we'll select reference plane and plane, and after that we'll select uh, the end point of the lines that we have made. First we'll select the upper portion and then we'll select this one and so both both things are done and here the plane is made so uh, if uh, anybody has doubt let me uh, tell this once again so what i have done is uh, i have selected the lines uh, basically the threaded lines that we have made and we and i have selected the uh, one minute. so what i have done is selected the threaded lines and the end point of the threaded lines so with that i can i have got a reference plane here and we'll be sketching on this reference plane so select this reference plane and uh, make it and we'll start sketching on this so what we have to do is we have to make a triangle shape here so that we can give the threaded uh, thread depth and for that uh, for that uh, we are going to make a center line here so Just select a line and make a line through the origin point and make the top portion of the triangle and just connect all the three lines. Now we'll be giving the dimensions a bit zoom now. The bottom portion will be of 1 mm so 0.5 on the left and 0.5 on the right. Now the total length will be 1 mm and uh, but before that I will make a center line, horizontal center line. Just select center line and your center line is being made. Now, once the center line is made, I'll give that 0.5 mm dimension here. And just you can do these all dimensions. 
now we'll be making threads for that uh, just exit the sketch and select swept cut and here the geometry is selected now the option with the circle for that we have uh, we have to select the sketch and for the line one as you can see uh, here we will be selecting the th uh, the threaded lines that we have made earlier and after selecting that this is how something how it will look now after the sketch has been selected now after the sketch has been selected we'll be uh, will be making threads just right click that and here yeah, the threads are being made so as you can see we have made v threads here and this is how the upper portion will look like now in this uh, we'll be making uh, the arm and uh, the high pressure chamber for that we'll just make it vertical the front plane and we'll start sketching on the front plane so start by making a center line now we'll make uh, some rough sketches for the final arm and chamber so start by making a selecting a center rectangle and we'll give this uh, dimension as 48 mm okay 48 mm so the center rectangle is basically the half portion of the high pressure chamber now uh, this height as 55 and half width as 16.9 okay just select the bottom portion and revolve boss base okay i forgot to give the one dimension so for that just select this one and this and give this as 5m dimension between these two and okay now we'll select uh, the rectangle for extrude uh, revolve boss base command so don't select the uh, the whole rectangle just the one edge of the rectangle and uh, we'll do is 360 degree revolve boss space now the chamber is done now we'll be making some rough sketches starting with the arm and for that we'll give some dimensions this as 9 mm and from center to that point as 4 point 4.2 now we'll give this as 10 mm and the, also the other side as 10 mm okay 10 mm then Now we'll make a up sketch of and uh, of the arm. We'll give this as ninety. Okay, it is already perpendicular. Constraint. Okay. So we'll give it give this angle. Uh, the angle bit between these two as one sixty three point six six. Okay, just to make it okay one forty six point six six. Just to make it clear, and 
the other side as 240.2 Now uh, this is done. So we'll extrude this, um, but for that we'll give this as 28.58. It is done. Now we'll extrude this by 10 mm. 10 mm from from mid plane and mid plane is done. done. Now we'll make, uh, make the remaining portion. For that, we'll sketch on front plane. Just make a center line and uh, make a parallel constraint between the arm and the center line that we have made parallel. Constraint selected and done. Now we'll select the uh, just see the properly the uh, the rectangle that I've chosen for making this. Make sure you select the proper commands that have been chosen in this video. We we'll make this as thirty five mm. 11 mm. Yeah, I forgot to give one dimension. So we'll start by giving this as the distance between the two line two things as nine point nine four. Now we'll again follow the same procedure, the rectangle. This has thirty mm. Now you can use the shortcut command that we have discussed earlier. This has 11 mm. Now we'll give the dimension constraint that is 5 mm between the arm and the rectangle. Uh, make sure that the rectangle doesn't uh, go outside the chamber. So now just uh, revolve boss piece this rectangle. Three sixty degrees and it's done. This is how the arm and the high pressure chamber will look like of the DNM shock absorber. Now, after that, we have to select the bottom portion of the shock absorber. And we have to sketch on it. So for that, just uh, select sketch and uh, go to the corner of the circle, and we'll get a center point. And uh, on that center point, we can make this circle. We'll give this circle as fourteen mm. Extrude this circle. Just by two mm. Now on that circle, just right click and sketch.
Now I'll choose again another circle, a smaller one with 10 mm diameter. Extrude it by 1 mm. Good. Now we have to do this as 12 mm. Then I am just extruded the same way. Now uh, then again select that portion and right click and sketch. Now what we'll do here is we can select that uh, thing and just right click and sketch. Right click sketch and we'll select uh, hexagon. So for that just uh, go through the corners of the circle and uh, we'll get a center point. We'll go through the corner the center point will show and on that we'll make a hexagon. Just put the circle diameter as uh, 10 mm and extrude it to 2 mm it's done so this is how the bottom point of the chamber will look again just okay. we'll give this as 1 mm not too much 1 mm now we are making the cap of the high pressure chamber for that just select the top portion top portion right click and sketch Be making a circle, just go through the corners and the uh, center point will be visible. And on that center line, we can make a circle. Let's give the dimension as 10 mm. Extrude that, extrude it by 2 mm. Again, select the in this space, right click and sketch. Right click and make uh, the view proper, just right click and sketch. And after that, we can make another circle to the center line, a bigger one. We'll give this as 20 mm. Just extrude that, extrude it by around 10 mm. This is how it will look. So, we have to give a chamfer here so the cap will look properly. For that, Select chamfer, select chamfer, and here just give this, select this one, and give dimension as 5 mm. Okay, make sure the arrow is pointing in the right direction. Okay, that's done. So, this is how the cap will look like.
So we are almost done with the uh, upper body of the shock absorber. We just we have to give the colors, proper colors. Now uh, we are still remaining with the some finishing. For that, we'll make a circle on the chamber. Three circles. A select circle and start making it on the chamber. After that, we'll give dimensions. 3 mm. 3 mm. And this one has three, also 3 mm. And we'll give the dimensions between the circles. 2.5 this is 4.15 and between these two we can give 6.5 now that now what we have to do is a uh, revolve cut for that we need a center line and uh, now we'll choose revolve cut and select the circles. Circles are selected 360 degrees and so we will give some finishings on the arms also. So for that, just select the arm, right click sketch and select offset entities and select reverse and here I have given a uh, dimension for my so, so the dimension that I have given for the offset entities is 2 mm. As you can see here, the dimension here is 2 mm. Let me add doing this. Then, extrude cut of uh, 1 mm. Okay, we have to give the some. We have to remove the edges of the of the finishing that I have given. So for that, select fillet. It is fillet, and we'll remove all the edges. We'll give and uh, give a fillet of one mm to all the edges. To remove the sharp portions just one mm two mm okay two mm and it's done so we have to give the extrude cut here extrude, uh, extrude cut just select the portion and of one mm of extrude cut will be given on this side now we have to repeat the same procedure on the other side as well now this is how uh, the Extrude cut will look or uh, after the edges removed. Now, here we will do the same thing offset entities. Just do the offset entities here, reverse of 2 mm. Just select the plane, uh, side and right click sketch and do offset entities reverse to mm then we'll re uh, remove all the edges again actually make sure that you are giving the 1 mm of extrude cut on both the sides just to make uh, the cut symmetrical Now we'll remove the uh, some more edges of the other portions. 
the sharp edges will be removed uh, you can remove your edges as per your choice or you can just follow the procedure here just give one mm of uh, fillet to all the sharp edges Uh, note that if you are selecting the edges on your own, uh, there are some there are chances that uh, some errors may occur. So don't uh, select too many edges. Now uh, this uh, two edges are done. Now I'll remove the edges from the top portion. Okay. As you can see, uh, some of the edges of the top portion are removed, and this is how it will look. While selecting edges, make sure that you are holding the control key so you can select multiple edges. Uh, and do without that, maybe. Now we'll be giving some final uh, removal of edges to the design. Just select, uh, just make sure that you are not select selecting too many edges. The edges are selected. Just click OK and it's done. Now we'll be giving colors. Uh, before that, this is how it will look. black and it's done we just hide the lines and now what uh, we can do here is just right click on the portion that we want to do, we want to color and from that we can see uh, the globe color option and from that we can choose the colors now we have given the uh, top as uh, a red color What we have to do is select the portion that we want to color and here it's done. 
uh, the, this portion remained and just, just select that and whatever portion so this is because the fillet we did was together so, okay the bottom portion okay doesn't matter now select the bottom portion just select appearances and you will uh, after right clicking you can see there are options and from that options you can select the color that you want now the here i gave a uh, bottom portion as uh, bottom screw as gray color you can give as per your choice now selecting the drum cylinder okay. now selecting the portions that i want to be colored uh, giving it as a bright blue color Now we'll be making the bottom shaft design that is to be going inside the upper body. For that, select front plane and uh, just select center line. Make sure to use the short command, short color commands that we have discussed discussed earlier. So we'll be making a center line here on the front plane. Now after that, just make a circle. Now we'll make another circle and just to give the dimensions. But before that, we'll do Let's make this uh, horizontal constraint and after that we'll trim entities just uh, like the upper portion that we did this is the bottom portion through which the bolt will be going for the mounting of the shock absorber now again the where the radius will give as 12 mm now the inner one is also uh, the diameter is 12 mm Now we'll make a center line. So before that, uh, we'll give an extrude or uh, through mid plane of uh, 10 mm, okay, 14 mm. 14 mm will be the extrude, and we have the bottom portion will look. Is perfectly 14 okay. Measure and this is 12 mm. Give one minute. The height was 22. We will evaluate again. This is 14, and then the height is. 22 mm okay not 12 22 now we'll select this uh, face and just right click and select uh, sketch and we'll make sketch on this started starting with making a circle and we'll give this as 50 mm and extrude it for extrusion we give 5 mm of extrude now we have to make uh, this as some sort of curve so for that we'll uh, sketch on the right side front plane right side and 
minute. So now we will see what we are going to do. So we will select the front frame in this in the view proper and in now we'll give some sort of curve for that just make a triangle in the front plane right side front plane and given dimension this as 3.5 this as 18 mm okay and we'll give a ball cut just select the portion and you can see on the on this side so this is how it will look as you can see there is a curve we have generated on the face of the bottom portion So one thing that I didn't give was this the center line. It's just selecting the whole triangle. Okay, about the center line we have to make this. So this is how it will look. Now, once this is done, we'll be making a slot. Okay, first we'll remove the edges. We'll give a chamfer of 4 mm. Okay, 4 mm it's done, and this is how the bottom portion will look. We will remove the edges from the bottom portion. Just select the edges. From both the sides and after selected just select and give the dimension as one mm of the lid. Now select this portion, just right click and sketch on it. Make sure it is from the bottom side, just right click and sketch. Okay, put uh, one minute. Okay, we are doing the right thing. And we'll make a circle from the front push front side. And we'll give dimension as 12 mm. This, uh, this circle we have made uh, for making the shaft. Just reverse the direction and give a uh, the length is 70 mm. 70 mm correctly you have to get, and this is how the shaft will look. Now, two th things are remaining one is a slot, and one is a bottom screw. So we'll be starting with making a screw. The, and for that, just uh, select the piece that I've selected and sketch on it. Make a circle. Give six mm diameter. Uh, note that for I'm selecting the faces uh, by right clicking the mouse and selecting sketch. Um, once the extrude is being done, then you can see that I have given 6 mm of uh, circle and extrude is of 2 mm. So we done. Select again the face of the extrude and select sketch. And again, we have to make circle on the face. Just make a circle.
doesn't matter we have to uh, again give the dimension so given 15 mm of diameter to the circle that we have made and we have to do is extrude the circle to 5 mm and this is how it will look so again here the screw the bottom screw is uh, will not be uh, like this we have to make a fillet for that uh, just select fillet chamfer and for select the edge that we have to remove select the edge properly and uh, the direction of the arrow we have to make sure it is in the right direction and give off uh, give the fillet of 2 mm 45 degrees and after that this is how it will look now select the face this face as you can see that i've selected just uh, right click and sketch on it right click through the mouse and sketch sketch and, uh, what we have to do is make a rectangle here yeah, again select right uh, right click sketch and uh, make a rectangle here you can you will get a point and through that we will make a center rectangle just give the dimension this as 30 mm and uh, the width as 8 mm and after that just make extrude cut through all you can do Just turn it and see how much you want and make sure it is uh, going through all and this is done. Now the bottom portion is done. Now we'll give colors. We want to select the appearance and open the appearance category. Select the color you want to give to your design. I'll be giving black color and for the screw or the top, whatever you say, you can say, uh, we'll be given that as a uh, red color. So Again, you will have to select this. Get inside. Okay. We'll see if we have any light colors available. But for that, just select okay the part. Right click and we'll give get appearance options and from there there we can select this we'll give black color to the whole uh, part and for the screw or the top uh, we'll give select the face just select uh, the globe color option we'll get after right clicking uh, and uh, on that we'll select uh, the portion that we want to color and we'll give the red color for giving the color, uh, if you are not able to see options, just, uh, just right click your mouse and on the face that you want to color and you will get a red color glow, glow option on which you can see appearances and through that you can say you can color the portion that you want. This is how it will look. Okay, so now we'll be making the upper ring which will hold the spring and we'll be making the spring at the oh, at the at the final assembly time. So so before that we'll make the upper spring. So starting with so for that starting with uh, selecting front plane. 
within the view proper and selecting sketch starting with making a circle just give dimensions as 32 mm another circle I will make three circles basically so giving the center circle dimension as 47 mm and the outermost circle as 50 mm Now we'll make a circle at the top portion and trim entities. We yeah, will trim this also. Now we'll make a linear sketch pattern, linear sketch pattern for the circle that we have made and we will uh, just arbitrarily select uh, the number of uh, circles on the, uh, the circumference of this circle we will select 9 just okay, click ok and you can see there 9 circles are being made on the circumference now we will have to trim all the portions but before that we'll make uh, another sketch we will do the trim trimming the circles from the outermost circle from the circles Now once this is done, we'll make another sketch and that select line and you'll get a point between the uh, half circle, the semi-circles basically. Just select mid, uh, cent, uh, mid, plane, mid line and make a line through that point. Starting with making a rough sketch and we'll give dimensions. This has 5.5 mm and joining this uh, the both the ends on the center circle and just give angle as 45 degrees. 45 degrees and understand. So doing it same on the other side also. The select line. Giving measurements, this has 45 degrees. This is now just trim the portions that we don't want, the portions that are outside. Now, once this is done, we'll again this uh, do this for this also linear sketch pattern, circular sketch pattern. Note that for the previous one also we did the circular sketch pattern, not the linear one. Now to now we'll do give uh, the numbers for of this sketch also as nine. Once the sketches are made, just trim the outer portions, portions from the outer circle. Just trim the center circle, uh, the portion of the center circles, and mm -hmm. 
now once this is uh, once the trimming is done this is how it will look and we have to extrude this for making of the upper ring now extruding it uh, out through 5 mm once this is done okay what we did no we have to do this by 4 mm we have to extrude the ring by 4m once this is done we, we can give colors just follow the step for giving colors if you have any doubt I, what I did was yeah, right clicking on the page that I want to color and uh, from right clicking we get options of appearances uh, red color globe something like that and from that we can choose colors for the uh, for the part that we have made once that is, this is done this is how the upper ring will look and this is uh, is going to be used in our assembly of uh, final uh, shock absorber basically the final shock absorber assembly so one thing that is remaining is the billet that is going to be placed inside the Inside the portion that we are made on the top side and the bottom side of the damper uh, bodies, uh, the 12 mm uh, 12 mm diameter hole that we are made. Uh, in that we are going to place this part that we are going that we are uh, going to make make now. For that we have to select front plane just and make a center line. Making a center line here. I choose a center rectangle. Center rectangle through the origin. Give dimension, the outer dimension as 12 mm. Uh, that is basically we have to give the radius uh, that is 6 mm and the inner radius as uh, 4 mm. Now the width mm -hmm. has 14 mm. Now we'll just make sure the both the origin and the center of the rectangle uh, are vertical. Just give the vertical constraint by selecting both the points and we'll give a revolve boss space and here it is done. This is how it will look uh, will it and I will give appearances colors basically a light peach color and uh, this is how it will look after this we are going to start the assembly starting with the assembly we will import uh, we will select we will go to file new assembly file new assembly and we will select uh, we will import all the parts now placing all the parts starting with the upper body then we'll likely import all the parts uh, the billet the bottom portion the upper ring now we'll going to we'll be meeting all the parts accordingly starting with the billet inside the 12 mm diameter upper hole Before that, we'll make sure to take the dimension here. The 12 mm diameter and center distance is 14 mm correctly. Okay. Now the billet is of correct dimensions and just start to mate. Make sure to follow the steps properly. Select this face and the face of the upper portion and 
refresh it here once again done it's done properly mated and the bullet is coming or not coming out from both the sides so it is properly mated now the bottom portion select the with the select both the portions properly now you can check this again so how to select the shaft the inside portion of the upper body and select mate and it's done so okay. Then uh, we have to make sure just select uh, both the faces of the upper and bottom portion and make it and make it parallel. Make it parallel. Then. Now select the inner ring. Okay, we'll make this separately. Uh, now, as you can see, this sharp can move through the upper body. So we'll give uh, the upper ring and the sharp and the upper body meet by selecting the portions. It's done. Now we'll give a distance mate between the these two portions that were selected now, and just select on the distance post and give it as zero point five inches. You can type icon or you can select uh, the mode of dimensions. I'm giving here 0 0.5 inches and uh, like this. Then. So we we can uh, we if we want two uh, parts uh, like same parts then we can select control and uh, on control on the part and we can and drag then we uh, then we can get, get a copy of the part so for for the billet i did the same and uh, i made it just like the previous one now again we will get uh, give a distance mate between the bottom portion of the upper body and uh, the and the bottom part bottom shaft part and we'll give a distance mate of Two inches probably so this is uh, basically that uh, the travel that the damper will be giving we will give uh, we will not, not this meets one minute just select the faces properly like the faces give this as two inches or fifty two inches two i n and then click ok
once that is done uh, this is how it will look the after meeting of the parts so one thing that we are remaining to do is uh, the spring design and that we are going to do right uh, inside our assembly so, so one thing that we have to uh, i did mistake is uh, we have to uh, change the distance plate that we gave for the shaft uh, so just delete the distance plate and we'll give it again just select the portions this face and this face we will give advanced mates here and give here the distance as two inches and uh, uh, there is one more distance that we can give here and uh, for that we'll give one inch one inches and just click right and it's so this change that uh, I have made here is uh, to give a constraint to the amount of travel the damper can give. So there will be only one inch of travel and uh, for the shaft and one inch will be restricted as you can see here. So here we'll be making the spring part of the DNM damper. For that, we'll go to assembly, start, uh, click on insert components, we'll get a drop down of new part, click on new part. And once we have selected that, we have to do is uh, select the bottom portion of the upper ring. And uh, this is how it will look. And once that is done, go to reference plane and select plane. No, we will not do that. We'll exit the sketch here will not add any plane now once we have exited we will select plane and reference plane and plane and then we will give a, select the bottom portion of the ring and give the distance between the bottom portion of the ring and the plane as zero so bottom portion of the ring you can see here once again here the reference plane we have selected open some basically reference geometry so we have exited the sketch we have uh, selected reference geometry reference plane selecting the bottom portion once we have selected that we will give that our distance as zero so once that is done we will get a plane on the bottom portion of the upper ring now we will make another plane so selecting this face as you can see here so okay, once again we have select this face and just give the distance between the plane and the face as zero okay once that is done this we will get two planes we have made two planes here plane one and plane two now selecting plane one just uh, extend this plane So now we'll be sketching on the plane one, selecting the plane one and we'll make a circle here of 42 mm. Once the circle is made, yes. Okay. Select, uh, give the dimension to the circle as 42 mm. Once the dimension is given, this is how uh, the circle will look. And, okay. The dimension now you can clearly see it is 42 mm now once that is done now we'll make a, a line extending from the center center of the circle to the uh, to one of the corner points Now exit the sketch. Now we'll be sketching on plane 2. 
for that select plane 2 and sketch and we'll just make a one point on the plane 2 once the point is being made is being made i will make a uh, select sketch uh, 3d sketch and one line we're going to make select we are going to do this in 3d sketch and selecting that point and the bottom point that we have made on plane 2 Yeah. Just exit that. Select 3D sketch. 3D sketch. Just from this circle, this point that we have made on plane two to plane one, we are going to connect one line. Once the line line is being made between the plane one and plane two, uh, then we'll go. We are going to further proceed with the spring just exit the sketch here so now once we have made this uh, we are going to select surfaces uh, but before that exit the sketch and uh, now uh, one thing that uh, you may notice is that uh, there are there is no option of surfaces in uh, in my solidworks if you have it is great but uh, for those who do the that uh, those who don't have the option of surfaces just click on the uh, just uh, go to uh, just uh, take your cursor towards the features and just right click and you will get a drop down of toolbars so clicking on toolbars you will see on the right uh, right hand side uh, of the of the columns having uh, multiple options you will see on the right hand side column that uh, and on the bottom portion that you have a, a option called surfaces just select that and once you have selected surfaces surfaces are selected and you will just uh, select swept surface once you have selected swept surface go to uh, select go to circular profile and okay sketch profile you have to select the sketch profile and once you have selected that just select the line that we have made connecting the center portion of the circle and the outer portion of the circle and uh, then the vertical line for the pink one and uh, select uh, for profile simulation for profile orientation just select uh, keep normal constant and for profile twist uh, specify twist value and for twist control select revolutions and for directions uh, just go just select the number of uh, coils that you want for the springs and we will be selecting seven number of springs seven okay seven we will selecting we will be selecting okay six six loops good so as for our requirement we will be selecting six and just click right and once this is done this is how it will look uh, now we'll what we'll do is just click on uh, surface fill sweep now what we'll do is again go to surfaces uh, uh, sur sweep surface and uh, then select circular profile and select the coils that we have made after selecting that give the diameter of the uh, of the wire as 10 mm no it uh, will be giving at it as 8 mm and uh, it 8 mm is correct and just click ok this uh, this uh, helical uh, spring we are made uh, by using the surfaces option make sure you select the correct option and once that uh, you once this is done what we are going to do is click on the surface width and just uh, just uh, hide it 
you can just right click and be, you will get the hide option once that is done this is how the uh, string that we have made in the assembly will look like now exit the exit the assembly exit the assembly and this is how the the damper assembly will look like just uh, give appearances to the spring uh, as we have done earlier just right click and select the surface that we want to change the color of and give we'll give this as blue color and this is done. so we have successfully completed the assembly of uh, the dnm shock absorber and when you uh, move the shaft upwards or downwards we have to do is uh, rebuild the uh, rebuild if there is any uh, errors you can uh, uh, select the option on the top uh, top bar of the so uh, of the solidworks display uh, it looks like a traffic signal and just click on that you will properly have the assembly of uh, of the damper now we'll do is motion study for motion study just uh, for motion study we'll be doing this just uh, select the five seconds that is uh, we'll select a line uh, select the uh, this uh, time to time line uh, and uh, place uh, place our cursor on uh, between 4 and 6 basically it will be 5 will be uh, giving a motion study of 5 seconds now for that once so uh, this is we have selected 5 seconds here and select this option motor and linear motor select the proper face that i have selected uh, have selected selected and reverse the direction Now for the part, we will select the upper rim. Now we will select the distance of op distance option in motion and give a distance of 25.4 mm, basically one inch, one inches, and timing of start and end, five seconds, zero to five seconds. Now this is okay. Just select right, right, and once that is done, we will get. Uh, motion study of five seconds of our da damper travel. Now uh, you can see the motion study of the shock of it. So this is how the DNM RCP PS shock absorber of 190 by 51 mm is being made with a motion study of five seconds. So if you like the video, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button to get the updates about uh, the similar designs and uh, models of uh, various parts that uh, that are going to be used in car. And also I make videos on automobile, vehicle dynamics and race car engineering. So thanks for watching.